Hi everybody, this is a video on how to fabricate some FNIRS data. Um, admittedly, I stole a little bit of thought from the uh, link at the top of the uh, script here, so it's from mathoverflow.net. Um, I modified quite a bit just to make it FNIRS related, but uh, the previous post was basically about how to simulate a time series. Um, at the start here, uh, we designate just the data size. So how many data points are you actually wanting to plot? We're going to chop off a few data points from this uh, just because I'm going to apply a bit of a shift and everything. Um, but you can, of course, uh, increment it up a little bit if you want to uh, make up for that uh, loss in data, data frames. So I'm going to designate 10,000 data frames here. Uh, I'm only going to plot a portion of that, but I'm, I want a sufficient number of data points just to play with. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is set some coefficients and the coefficients are basically going to be we're kind of producing something like a random walk if you will. Random walk being that you you start at a certain time point and you either go up or down and the next time point you either go up or down and then the next time point you either go up or down and it just modulates the, the time series. Uh, it's very similar to what uh, hemodynamic uh, flow would look like. So uh, this, this A um, is in some cases it's called alpha is going to be the multiplier that I set for the previous time points. Uh, the B is going to be the multiplier that you set for the current time point. And it's basically going to affect how your walk um, maneuvers. If you set the previous time point at a multiplier above one, it will actually just increase readily absurdly. So it actually won't be kind of a uh, won't be a time series in a way that we want. Uh, so we're going to have it at 0.7. I think originally it was set to 0.8. The next thing we're going to do is initiate our uh, oxyhemoglobin, our deoxyhemoglobin to zeros, and we're going to make it uh, the length of the data size that we have. So let's go ahead and run these little blocks here. And again, I press F9 and it runs those, those data frames. Um, Next, I've created what I call the HBR ratio, and, and all that's going to say is uh, I'm creating two time series here. It's going to be oxy and deoxy. And uh, for anyone coming, if, you, if you're not too new to FNIRS, you'll know that the oxy hemoglobin moves quite a bit more than deoxy hemoglobin. So I want to make a ratio of how much more the oxy hemoglobin moves than the deoxy, or in this case, how much less the deoxy moves than the oxy. And in this case I'm going to say the deoxy moves one-third uh, in amplitude of the HBO. So when I run that, go ahead and set that up, and then I'm going to initialize my first point. So I have to start my random walk from somewhere, and for that I'm just going to use a random integer. So go ahead and set that up. So now if you were to open it, you could actually see the first integer is set to that. Um, then I'm going to actually perform a loop. The loop is going to go from the second frame, because uh, I've already initialized the first frame, and it's going to go all the way to the end, which is data size set to 10,000. Then I'm going to set the points uh, in the loop of HBO to this formula here. And again, it's just a, a smaller than one multiple of the previous time point plus whatever the random multiple is, um, this, this random integer coming up multiplied by this uh, coefficient here. And you can modify these to your whim. Uh, just make sure that this A, and if you want to play with it, you can play with it to see what it does. Um, but uh, make sure that A value is under one. So I'll go ahead and run that. Set it up, great, we have our HBO, and I'll, I'll show you it in a second. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to run, um, I'm gonna create the HBR uh, here. And actually, I should actually set this he, uh, I've, I've indicated that I'm going to start actually not from uh, 2 as was the previous point and not from uh, 1 even as the previous point was but I'm going to start from 5. You don't have to. Uh, in fact you could actually uh, we actually will set it to 2. I think 2 is fine. I'll explain my reasoning for what I had it as 5 in just a second but we'll set it as 2. I think that's safe. Um, then I'm going to do a very similar thing as I did before. I'm just going to set the value as I go through the loop of HBR. What I am doing here though is I'm going to multiply it by a negative. Uh, the negative denotes that when oxy goes up, deoxy would be expected to go down and vice versa. And I'm going to multiply it by the value that's currently in HBO and by um, 
the HBr ratio. So basically what I'm going to do is say, okay, for every value of oxyhemoglobin, I'm going to multiply it by one third and I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to decrease the amplitude and flip it. So go ahead and run that and press F9. There we go. And then I'm going to put this shift in. Uh, another little factor of uh, hemoglobin or, um, or the F near signal is when oxy goes up, it's actually a slight delay before deoxy goes down. So what I actually want to uh, encompass is that I want to kind of shift the oxy hemoglobin to the right or excuse me, the deoxy hemoglobin to the right or the opposite would be shifting the oxy hemoglobin to the left. So in order to do that, I'm going to dictate how many frames I shifted to. And that's what I had already set up here. It was actually kind of unfair that I put that. That was probably a bad choice. Um, but I'm going to set it up here. So I'll go ahead and run that. And that sets up how many frames I want to shift it by. You, you're free to adapt this, but I think five frames is probably fine considering a sample rate of 10 hertz or 5 hertz or something like that. Um, it'll give you a second or so, uh, half a second to a second. Then what, what we're going to do here is with the oxyhemoglobin, we're going to go from the first data point up to the number of frames. And so first data point to the fifth data point, I'm just going to remove those. Uh, so when I run that, you'll see the values here go from 10,000 to 9,995. There we are. And then I'm going to do the same except at the end of the deoxyhemoglobin. So I basically chopped off the left side of oxy, which moves it to the left. And I've chopped off the right frame of the deoxy, which is shifting it, which is basically compensating uh, for the si size change. So I'll go ahead and run that. And again, now we just maintain the exact same size here. Just to show you what we've created, I'm now going to create a figure. I will plot the oxyhemoglobin points one through 200 so we don't get the, the 10,000 time frame here. I'm gonna put hold for on, which allows me to just plot another time series on top of the figure and I can do plot and I'll do it for HBR uh, as well for that size. So when I run that, I get this. And for anyone who's worked in FNIRS, that should look relatively familiar. Of course, it's more or less random, um, but you have the kind of fast uh, paced uh, time frequencies or so, and then you also have kind of some modulations or some oscillations uh, in a shorter, in a, in a lower frequency. Uh, so that gives you basically a fake F near time series. Uh, you know, you can always run this if you're trying to compare different algorithms. You're trying to play around with data that you don't necessarily have, or you, that you don't want, you maybe don't have access to, or something. This will allow you to kind of create something to play with. Uh, hopefully, that was helpful. Um, kind of in. Uh, hopefully, it'll allow you to enjoy uh, the play aspect behind it and give you something to. Uh, uh, spend some time on during this whole shutdown. Anyway, I hope that was useful. If you guys do have any requests, please uh, either leave a comment or shoot me an email. I think on my profile I have my email ready, and uh, I'm happy to help wherever I can. Thank you.